Today's and, uh, podcast. Yes, let's go. So, kicking off our conversation on behavioral product design, I'd love to introduce you all to my dear friend, uh, Sumed. Uh, Sumed is the chief product officer at Humsafer, and he's worked in a range of startups um, ac- um, across across the space. And he's has um, a training and a background in both human centered design and well, very well read in behavioral science. So he occasionally schools me on behavioral science too. <laughs> um, I often describe describe his product uh, as the Instagram of uh, safe driving and well-being. <laughs> uh, n- not so much in the form of it being addictive as in as addictive as Instagram, but more in the use of um, the level of use of behavioral science to um, engage um, drivers and bring safe behaviors top of mind. So the sophistication in the use of behavioral science is um, something which I've been very um, drawn to and not, not, necessar- not necessarily because uh, uh, of anything to do with me, but because of the range of disciplines um, which um, Sumit shares with his teams. Um, so right from human-centered design um, um, to um, the, uh, social marketing and communications and behavioral science is somewhat lies at the heart of um, what the team does and they really live through these dis- different disciplines applying a range of frameworks and models in how they think which is um, which I'd love to um, talk about in this conversation too. Um, maybe starting off Sumed I'd love to hear what's your story and how did you get started in um, um, your interest in the field of human-centered design and more specifically behavioral science. Hey, Vishal, thank you for the introduction. Um, so uh, firstly, thank you for this opportunity. It's great to just have conversations around uh, subjects like this. There's, there's so much to be done. And I think uh, one thing which is uh, very prominent in the product management uh, groups is the, you know, the imposter syndrome of like, um, are we good enough? Are we practitioners? Are we novices? Are we experts? And, you know, like there's a lot of uh, chatter around that. And I think the best way to even confront it or like uh, understand it is to have conversations in different fields. So thank you for this uh, opportunity. And uh, so a little about me, I'll keep it, I'll keep it very short. I'll keep it high level and I'll let you let your follow up questions direct where you'd like for it to go. Otherwise, it's going to be a really long conversation. But uh, I think uh, so Vishal and I actually studied together. We were in the same apartment. Um, uh, and uh, when we graduated, obviously, Vishal went his behavioral journey. I was not so fortunate. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And there was a year of not knowing and just exploring and I think uh, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got was like, I was switching jobs every now and then. And uh, I, like, at that time, I really, I was still very driven by IDEO and like, you know, a lot of the design methodologies it really made a lot of sense because I still remember watching this one, um, either it was a TED talk or, or there was a video with uh, Tim Brown who basically said like, you know, design used to be this thing where there'd be a, a bald man in black uh, glasses and a tur- turtleneck sweater talking about beautifying things. And it went from that and it evolved into solving really complex problems. I think that was the, I would say, the small snowball, which uh, kept getting bigger in my head. And uh, I kept diving into just the field of design. And I think, uh, obviously, with design, there was the designing of the product. There was the um, the psychological insights that you could learn about the users you're designing for. And, and I think all of that snowballed. But one of the best conversations I've ever had, and that really helped me a lot in my career was uh, there was a person called Divya Vishwanathan who at that time I'm talking 10 years ago when I just started my career um, like uh, so she was she was working with IDEO and I basically wanted to get a, get to know her so I asked her like um, so uh, I mean if if you had to hire like I mean IDEO has some they, they've done some great projects I'd really like to work with them if you had to hire someone what would you look for and she said something interesting she said that we're looking for T-shaped professionals so uh, you have, uh, you know, right after you graduate, you find a narrow field and you kind of specialize in that. And that's great. Um, and then th- there's obviously the other option, which I did, which is you're a generalist, you do a bunch of things. And, and the good things about, th- there's good and bad in both. So with specialists, they're good at what they do. You give them something out of the field and they get flustered. Or there are generalists who deal with a bunch of things, but you um, you throw a little bit of complexity at them and 
they don't know what to do you know so um so what she spoke about is people who uh, what they look for is people um who've uh, got that breadth of experiences and different uh, aspects different roles different industries and then they have that vertical line which basically is the specialization that you like to be trained in and that really got me thinking as to like how 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 do I, like i mean so far i've been this confused guy who switched jobs every um you know six months to a year to being this guy who's collected a breadth of experiences and how i can build on that and i think uh, partly i think uh, an interesting thing about that story is i think there's this quote which says that you know life is understood backwards but it has to be lived forwards so a lot of what i feel like i do is uh, i intellectualize everything i've done in the past saying yeah this is how i've connected the dots but we i don't know i mean we are finite beings in an infinite space so yeah <laughs> making sense of things as we go so i think that that but that really helped me tell my story better and i feel like the confused kid was now a decisive product manager so i keep uh, <laughs> i like to like tell that to like people who just starting off and uh, but anyway so that that was basically my, my journey with uh, regard to the confusion but uh, what then that meant that, is like yeah just, yeah, just ju- jumping in that that really connects <laughs> with um um what philip tetlock talks about um in, in in his work around um the comparison of foxes and hedgehogs um if you come across okay. that so um foxes tend to be um these uh, uh foxes have very long childhoods to start with compared to a lot of mm-hmm. other other mammalian mammalian species they have about a six week childhood where they re- learn a whole range and diversity um, of skills and you know um as coming as a fox and as clever as a fox comes because they ha- they have the all these different tools to draw from um hedgehogs on the other on the other hand are super specialists uh, they're really really good at one thing um a hedgehog is really good at, at defense um uh, ev- yeah. evidently from its from its shape and he's looked at data of, you know 20000 um experts and compared foxes versus, versus hedgehogs and mm-hmm. even for people who are experts in their own discipline so take a behavioral scientist for example <laughs> uh, a fox who's partly trained in behavioral science but also partly trained in um uh, philosophy and chemistry and and sociology tends to outperform the ultra specialist <laughs> so i i think there's lots of merit in uh, whether it's uh, being taking a t shape um, path to learning or uh, um thinking like a fox so how, so his his punch line is um how you think matters more than what you think sure yeah sorry no, i got you no, off with your journey but yeah um yeah i'd love to hear about maybe a bit about your journey and applied yeah applying human centered design and behavioral science Oh uh, yeah so i mean like generally product managers have different fields right like so, mo- most of them come from a tech background so, so most of them are uh, either operations people or people who've got business or like you know marketing and then they transition into product management so for me i've been kind of i've been across places so i've been in operations i've been i've been a project manager i've been a little on the like the marketing side as well uh, i won't say a growth strategist as such but I, i've got a little bit of marketing experience but uh, every startup that i worked with uh, it's been about like uh, i've learned different aspects of it and i would believe like so far the journey has been like understanding different tools understanding different frameworks but i feel like right now what i'm doing is i can call it product management and not trying to do product management but yeah and i'll come to what i do shortly but yeah nice i'd like to yeah maybe shift gear to um talking about um hum safe as um um that your other co- co-founder jehan has this amazing story um which um we could spend a lot of time talking about it's just such a fascinating journey which which he's taken forward and uh, and the idea um ca- carrying forward from that maybe could you give us your 2 minute elevator pitch for the hum safer mobile app Oh yeah I'd love to so basically um like even before we come to the application uh, since there's a lot of international audience I'd like to kind of also state that uh, like in India like we lose about 400 we, we have 400 deaths every day so there's about 5 lakh accidents in a year um lakh would be 500000 uh, uh yeah so 500000 accidents that we have in a day out of 500000 200000 are uh, straight deaths and uh, so so uh, 
like according to UN, the the figures are way higher than what NHAI, which is National Highway of Authority, has quoted. So, uh, road safety is a severe issue, but it's not addressed the way it should be addressed. And uh, our NGO, which is uh, Hums of a Driver Safety Foundation, is basically uh, our our vision is to reduce road accidents and improve the lives of truck drivers. So, any new idea, new offering, these are the two questions basically we try to ask uh, when we're uh, working on like you know addressing the the drivers needs and uh, the truck drivers in india like again um are paid way less than you know they would be paid in in the developed part of the country uh, part of the world and um yeah so our application is mostly to incentivize them to firstly like the uh, our challenge is not even to build a safety application our challenge actually would be to get them to care about safety and uh, yeah so i think that's that's where uh, our problem statement is and we can talk a little more about how we do it as we go. Awesome. Yeah, I know, I know um, on, the, on the behavioral side of things, which um, you uh, embedded across across your journey, Dilip Soman has a book called um, Behaviorally Informed Organizations. And he's identified two key areas to um, where he sees behavioral science playing a major role. One is in the marketplace. Um, so to solve some of the final mile problems, um, we can think of Uber as an example of being able to see um, when your driver comes, even if your driver shows up five minutes late, reduces the pain and the hassle of um, the ambiguity around when is my driver going to show up. Um, and there's lots of data to show that um, in the London underground, just having the dot matrix to show when your train is going to come um, was the biggest improvement in customer satisfaction just uh, it's fine if my train is 15 minutes late, but if I know it's going to come in 15 minutes, um, I can just sit down and read a book and not have to actively worry about it. So that's, I guess, the application of behavioral science in the marketplace. And he also talks about um, behavioral science within the organization. So this is applying uh, behavioral science for defining goals, defining strategies. Um, for the R&D of the product. So some of the, I know some of the research which you've done, some of the human-centered design research really pinpointed what, what are some of the pain points um, of, of, of the drivers and what are the blockers which uh, make it very difficult for uh, someone to actually drive safe. So even if safety um, is in their best interest, there's some systemic forces yeah. which make it incredibly challenging, as well as maybe um, he talks about your prepare go-to-market strategy and embedding experimentation at the center of it. And I, I know, and, and I know from our collaboration that you've touched upon both behavioral science in the marketplace, solving those final mile problems, but also within the organization. Yeah, I'd love to hear your reflections of how you conceptualize um, this and embed it into your own work. Yeah, sure. I think, uh, but before I begin, I think it's important to kind of talk about emerging markets and how do you like what is the big differentiate differentiator between emerging markets versus like designing for the West, right? So, should should we get unpack that right now, or should that should we save that for later? Yes, that that is the elephant in the room. Let's 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 go for it. <laughs> Okay, all right. So uh, a lot of times I actually show my designs to people and they are like, man, this is really noisy. Like there's so much color. Why are you like, why are you guys doing this? You know, like this, this, this like breaks, like, you know, people are used to material.io and like, you know, certain frameworks, which their eyes are used to. And then they see this and they're like, and you know, like, uh, I know I should be like, um, I should be probably getting like flustered, like as to why they're not like, uh, like finding that appealing, but actually I get happy because like, in India, there is like I like to believe India is divided into two parts. There's uh, there's the insulated, and then there's those who are um, you know um, like who are face first with all the oppression atrocities that they have to see in in their daily lives. And the insulation could be education, could be networks, could be like whatever it is that you've done to um, live in a well in a mansion. But like uh, what people see on ground is a whole whole different reality. So I think, uh, like, uh, while I interact with a lot of the insulated, I my product is actually with the uninsulated. So, uh, what are the steps that we take to kind of understand uh, how do we get there? And I think, uh, like, um, um, since this is a short interview, I can't get into the the story behind how we did it in detail. But basically, uh, so Jehan, who's the founder of the organization, if I had to talk about how we got into this, uh, Jehan's father used to be a truck driver about thirty years ago. So it started with one truck. He 
expanded to five, five to 10, and then now uh, Jehan took over the family business. And from 10 trucks, he's scaled the business to 110 trucks. So he's got a good experience of uh, a lot of uh, the, like, you know, the, the industry and the, and the market as such. Now, uh, what's interesting to note is that uh, when there were 10 trucks uh, that his father had, like, you know, he used to follow the old practices. So in a year, it was industry, I mean, it was a norm that like, there'd be three major accidents in a year. And when I say three major, I mean, loss of life, loss of limb is it was a major accident. And um, when Jehan took over the business, I mean, he, he wasn't personally okay with this. So what he did is he uh, started working, he, he did away with FMCG clients and he started focusing a little more on safety clients. So anyone carrying hazardous goods, uh, you know, like uh, chemicals where the stakes are much higher. So, um, uh, well, long story short, he basically, over the span of four years, he, he was able to, with 110 trucks, he was able to bring, bring the accidents down way low. So uh, with 10 trucks in a year, they had three major accidents. Well, with uh, like, uh, I think over the span of six years with 110 trucks, they, he like, they had like one major accident in the past four, four years, you know? So, um, like he was able to reduce this for various reasons. Like there were uh, real time interventions in their local language. There was human training. There was a, so, I mean, I can list a bullet list of things that actually got to uh, like, which helped them. But I think the, the real reason why he was able to do this is uh, because when he joined the family business, uh, he went on the truck as a cleaner um, to understand the issues that the truck driver faces. And, and just to explain what, what a cleaner is, usually uh, in India, we don't have driving schools. I mean, there are driving schools, but pe people don't go that route. The way it works is there is a truck driver and there's a cleaner who's probably 15, 16 years of age. And for two to three years, he works as an apprentice. And uh, he's the one who's basically takes the, you know, eventually will go on to ride his own truck. So Jehan went as a cleaner to, and the cleaner's job is to basically fix the nut poles, clean the truck, like, like, you know, serve the food to the, um, it's almost like an, like a, um, like a warrior apprent apprenticeship, I would say. So uh, when, when he went, like, you know, when you're in an insulated environment, like, you know, designing solutions from like, you know, sitting in your AC offices to, for people who like, you know, have a very different life from you, like there's, there's a stark, uh, difference there right so um i think maybe it comes from so another reason why jehan and i also uh, started working together was because i mean i talk human-centered design but he without academically knowing what it is he was basically doing that he was a fly on the wall observing the issues on ground so um yeah that's where we philosophically kind of i wasn't supposed to work on my own product for the next five years but this just organically made sense like there's a lot of synergies that we saw and but anyway um I'd like to now talk a little about certain emerging uh, market problems that we have seen and how we've tried to address them. And it'd be great to kind of uh, post this. We could probably even see if there's any questions in the chats and we can address them. But uh, mm -hmm. I think, okay, so the first thing is we need to understand that uh, for uh, the emerging markets, the mobile phone is actually a primary computing device. Um, and uh, what that means is like we have a laptop, we have a phone, but for them, it's just the phone. So everything is pretty much on the phone. Now you add to this, uh, the price range of the phones is not going to be beyond a certain. So in India, it will be like, uh, so you get the uh, 10,000 rup rupees is basically where you get the standard phones with a very limited amount of space. Then there's like uh, anything which is 25, like 15, 25,000 ranges. Now the, the phones are getting better daily, but like 15, 25,000 is like a decent range phone. And then you will have the iPhones and everything like 45,000 plus, like that's the starting, obviously it, it, it's ridiculous how expensive the other phones are also, right? So most of the drivers are, or most of the people who are at the bottom, I mean, um, we call it bottom of the pyramid, but uh, like uh, is it, it, it would be like people who can afford phones from uh, zero to, I mean, five to 10,000 and basically 10 to 15,000, that's the uh, range. And in this, the problem of so space, yeah. space is, yeah, so that's about two, yeah, yeah two hundred New Zealand dollars, or yeah, about two two hundred to three hundred New Zealand slash Australian dollars. Go on. Yeah, so I mean, so that that's the range that we're talking about. So like, when you have a primary computing device and you have like limited space, uh, like they don't look at whether your application is free. I mean, they they do look at that obviously, but for them, space is a big issue. So how much uh, the file size? And the amount of local local storage data that that's there on the application that is a serious concern. So one third of uh, like Indians basically have an issue of storage every day. So they have an application called Clean Master, which they use to like uh, clean out junk files and you know like a repetition of WhatsApp forwards. So that that that's an insight we also got to do. And by the way, um, some of the insights that I'm talking about are things we have on our own scene on our. Uh, 
uh, like through our experience but there's one really good talk from a google uh, product manager who's uh, designing for emerging markets it's a one and a half hour conversation and he sums it up really well i think uh, so I, i'd be more than happy to share that resource with uh, vishal once this conversation ends but uh, yeah so i mean you proceed so that was one issue the second problem is the issue of connectivity so it's not that there's no connectivity uh, but the problem is intermittent co- connectivity so there's a can in, internet connection at point a and then there's internet connection at point b but in the middle is where you kind of lose the range so how do you design a product which is not completely dependent on the internet but it's somewhat there so the way google does this is uh, i think you must have seen the dinosaur game so um uh, that that's one way to kind of keep someone entertained but if you really want to add value and not just entertain uh, i think if you try to search something on google and there's no internet it saves that file and later on when internet basically like the connectivity is back uh, it basically tells you hey like this is the word that you were searching for this is the result you know so that's how they plan for um, in this intermittent connectivity problem and uh, obviously there are other things like language support and um like guiding the user right so the one one thing is that uh, the i've seen western applications like uber like it's white and black and everything is pretty minimalistic but if you see like um i forget indian even east asian like uh, if you see like chinese websites it's like so many things happening you just like man this how's this working but somehow it works they like they like it when like i mean if you see a indian market right like there is someone shouting and there is someone who's like like being like um like you know that there's a first name basis with the people who shop there you know so there's a lot of chaos and i think Yeah, uh, I love to, to design. Uh, just add, adding to that, I love to reflect on the news channel. You know, the news channels or most TV channels <laughs> in India, you have yeah. like a debate going on on a very sensitive topic at times. You know, you could be talking about human rights issues, and there may be um, people from different political parties and um, 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 activists um, in a very heated debate, and a, and a, a panelist who's hosting the debate is only trying to flare up both sides. and then at bottom at the bottom you have the stock markets um going uh, uh moving t- and t- and ticking along and then you have the cricket score on the right hand side <laughs> and you have all this happening at the same time and it's just amazing yeah. that people are able to navigate such a chaotic space <laughs> man i mean it's it, it is it is it is quite a, it is quite overwhelming in a way but um i mean like it's 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 a it it's not a question of whether it's good bad right wrong it's just a question of that's how we function as a society i mean the chaos is us like you know we can't like, we can't function without chaos like i still remember like when i um uh you know so i mean i went from bombay to like studying um computer science in the university of glasgow and glasgow is a great like a, it's a great city um somehow like the university accommodations was not in the rough areas but in like the really nice areas and it was really beautiful but it was so quiet sometimes you get, I, i feel like i'm losing it you know like i'm like like how is how is it so quiet like where is the chaos and the weird thing is the chaos which i thought i'm running away from is what actually i was like being drawn towards again i'm like why like why is this aspect missing from my life i just is it's weird the things that you kind of uh, realize you uh, like are, are a big part of you but i mean yeah so i mean what 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 i'm basically saying is it's important to embrace the chaos rather than saying like we're not going to give you the chaos but then you need to kind of also there's kind of a method to the madness also it's not about just throwing all the information out there it's about throwing the right information at the right time so even when we were uh, designing the application like rather than just having a map which is constantly being there like you know there should be um, like based on your geolocation so like you know uh, there is a uh, there is so a lot of time this the school the, there'll, there'll be trees which are blocking signs on the road and also by the way india we don't really i personally don't see signs on the road that much like you know like uh, we just like it's it's just not there in our, in our uh, line of sight or in, in the way we basically function so through our application we basically say ki 3 km me school aa raha hai sorry i mean in 3 km is a school uh, so just like slow down a little you know like so those are the kind of ins- like i mean when do you give what is another thing so i'm not saying that you just uh, throw the chaos at the users out there but there has to be a way to kind of understand how like there would there will be like a certain level of chaos and how do you kind of there's a bit of a tug of war there how do you kind of like figure it out yeah yes i guess it's even more so in a chaotic environment designing for your system one automatic brain <laughs> i like to think of the examples of um there's a design thinking example if um if you hit the sign board you're going to hit the bridge and you you get that feedback loop so versus just saying that the bridge is you know seven and a half um meters tall 
you actually have a feedback loop. And another example is the 3D zebra crossing, if you've seen that. So it really stands out and it really makes it uh, make, uh, it really looks like you're going to actually hit someone in a zebra crossing. So that really gets your, gets your attention. So I, th I think there's small tweaks which we can make to better designing, um, especially from a road safety perspective um, for a system one response. Um, I'd love to maybe um, move the discussion towards exploring your design principles. Um, and uh, I know we had a very, um, I wouldn't call it a heated discussion because we always talk with so much passion, <laughs> but um, I think you challenged maybe one of the hypotheses which I brought to the table and very rightly, rightly so, and I've changed my mind um, since, which is that of applying loss aversion. So um, my the insight which I had um, shared at the time was this idea that um, loss aversion has um, suggest that our losses loom larger than our gains. Um, an example of um, loss aversion could be your N New Zealand status points. So you go from a gold status and if you do not take a flight within maybe one year, you fall down to silver status and you have lesser benefits as a silver member versus as a gold member. Um, and that's, that's, that's a very effective motivator. But I guess you had a de design principle of not using loss aversion, <laughs> which I found um, incredibly helpful. And um, I thought that was an awesome direction to move towards. Yeah, so I mean, I would like to say that, I mean, I, I do see value of it uh, principally in small doses. It's not like it, it doesn't completely work, but like in, in the context that we were talking. So, okay, let me let me kind of paint out the context and the picture a little bit. So, um, well, end of the day, what we're doing is it, we, we have a very challenging task at hand and we're aware of that. Like, uh, and, and I think uh, people in the tech startup space are very arrogant to say that my technology is going to like solve all problems like we 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 know why while we know technology does good we understand that there are certain limitations that are there so we're not going to take that away but uh what we basically what we're trying to do is uh we're trying to change human behavior firstly uh in an in an in a market where uh the government themselves don't really facilitate uh, like they bas so basically what happens in india is like when there's an accident like someone will come in but the prevention like actually talking about reducing accidents um there's not much talk there like and, and if the talk is there like it's more like from an idealistic like someone coming in saying hey you should do this like but they themselves won't be following it right so it's it's a very um it's a very difficult thing to kind of get in so um the way we basically looked at it is uh we wanted to uh we realized that i mean so okay let me put it this way my experience also comes from our, uh like uh, the first pilot that we did on the first uh, about two months two years ago i used to go down uh at all these places like transport nakas the transport nakas are places where all the trucks usually park their vehicles and there's like hundreds and thousands of trucks there so uh, we'd usually go there and uh, we talk to drivers and uh, when we when we just like talked about our story they were really moved they were really touched because what happens is that in the disguise of safety uh solutions are sold to um truck drivers but uh, realistically, the uh, the person who makes the money is the middleman. So uh, the, actually, the solution is actually tailored for them. And the truck driver is like, by the way, we're also doing this for you. And they say that this is for your safety, but essentially they're just tracking the truck driver. So it's like, so the truck driver must be driving for like 10 hours. He's anyways overworked and he's trying to rest. And just as he is about to rest, the tracker will tell them that he stopped the vehicle and the transport will call and be like, uh, why the hell are you resting? Like you're supposed to deliver this. Like if you don't reach this destination in the next two hours, like I'll cut thousand bucks from your, uh, you know, whatever the agreement was. So they're forced to like basically try it that way. Right. So there's a lot of apprehension when like organizations kind of give them solutions that they look at it in a very, um, stigmatized way right and uh, rightfully so so when we also kind of we went there and we said that this application is for you and rather than you know like we, we so we looked at a lot of things we didn't just like so there's psychological motivators um like you know like feel like the emotional motivators you how do we use the family so um when we basically talked about all these things that we were doing uh they firstly loved the fact that we were thinking about them so as a story they were really convinced that uh, un like until I figured out what my pitch was like you know like they, they really kind of zoned in but when I saw the usage no one cared and the reason was pretty obvious whether in India whether you're at the bottom or the top of the pyramid safety is always going to be an afterthought we don't really think about safety right so um, uh, what I basically then did is we kind of went back to the drawing board did a lot of like uh, qualitative research we spent a lot of time on this and what we learned is that um, 
they like i mean end of the day uh, a truck driver actually makes more money than a lot of people in the uneducated uh, sector um but the life is really hard right the price that he has to pay is this, is how difficult the life is on the road so um like um he he makes the money but uh, there's no um without going into another segue sorry i i tend to like go into like a lot of places but um uh, the, the 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 big problem is that uh, he 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 like he won't care about safety so how do we kind of get him to care about safety is what we basically try to address and we realize that everything that he's doing is to kind of earn money so so what we should do is either we help him make money or we help him save money and uh, it's these two things that we should be focusing on and when we started communicating in that way uh, we realized that we kind of hit home and then now safety was an afterthought but we kind of mass safety so we said that the more safe you drive the more money you get so the campaign was like jitna uh sardhani se chalaoge utna zyada paisa kamaoge so the safer you drive the more you earn and uh that was the that was basically when we hit hit home because we said that for every 10 kilo, so we have certain safety parameters based on what uh, the reason of accidents that happen and we said that um every 10 kilometers of safe driving 1.5 rupees goes straight into your bank account through upi there's no middleman so that really worked really well and uh, uh that's where basically the decision that we took there was that um two very over simplified ways of changing behavior would be you give the carrot or you give the stick so we said let the government let the government be the carrot let them be the ones who are enforcing but we'll be the ones who incentivize we don't say that don't do this we say that do what you want but if you do this you'd get more money or you'd get uh, you'd save more money and a uh, lot of our communication has been kind of uh, in that line sorry i can't yes. take a little long time to get yes no and i, I totally love your insight that um well there's um there are so many structural forces which make it incredibly hard the journey of a truck driver in india is incredibly hard it's incredibly challenging and they're exploited by everyone literally everyone in the system so right from the law enforcement so whether it's police taking bribes or whether that's um um the transporter putting um extra pressure on them to drive an extra 2 hours when they're already sleep deprived and everything's kind of <laughs> working against them and there all these sticks in place and you like to be the carrot amongst <laughs> all that stick which encourages positive behaviors versus you know uh, take something away um maybe what will be helpful is to yeah um walk us through a few examples of um what this app looks like and how you've maybe applied human centered design and behavioral science and yeah, into into yeah, the app yeah, so, itself yeah yeah i'd be happy to so basically uh, again so these are some of the new versions of the product so the first version that we did which was our mvp which was a very minimalistic product that we designed uh, it that was like an uber that was a very minimalistic white um clean designs and uh, it felt like any other corporate application so i'm just going to show you all two designs one is basically the the first time when they walk into the application what they see again these designs are still about to be uh, the fonts and the uh, the motifs the visual icons are still yet to be refined and changed but uh, the messaging would be kind of similar and the second point is the when they're driving how what nudges are we giving and how are we kind of asking them to change their behavior so those are the two things that i'd be i'd like to kind of showcase so um let me know once you can see my screen yeah shall you be able to see my screen nice yes it's up there yeah so uh sorry the it's going to look really crappy like i hate sh- showing these designs on the on the computer screen versus like uh, like i'd prefer showing it on a mobile but hey um not too bad um and uh, okay so basically uh hum safer so basically hum is basically in hindi us like so uh, the the communication is uh, so another thing that i basically changed my pitch when i used to go on ground is i used to keep i used to keep saying this is a safety application for you and they just looked at me like man like save your save your complex for someone else like why are you like telling me how to live my life you know so uh, it took me a really long time to understand what was the thing you know what what was that uh, opening which basically got them to listen and i think uh, one of jehan's drivers helped me kind of talk to his other drivers and he basically said ki uh, i can kind of uh, when i whenever i go on ground he basically helped me change my pitch from um, saying this is a safety application to saying that uh, ye application uh, matlab drivers ki salah leke ye application banani hai so we want to build this application through like uh, through your feedback and uh, 
obviously I'm missing the nuances here, but basically uh, it's to kind of tell them that like, we're not, we're not, so what, what that, what, what uh, Jehan's driver Miraj basically told me was that don't talk to the driver, talk, like understand him, like talk, like, you know, like see his pulse, like what, what is he like, you know, so those are the kind of insights I basically got. And that's why the word hum is kind of really important. So every, the, the word hum is us, like, it's not just you, it's not me, it's, it's us within this together. So hum and safer because we do kind of, although safety is masked, we kind of do talk about it. So it's hum. And, and also, by the way, hum suffer, it's, it's written this way, but the word hum suffer, and we've written safer here, but the word hum suffer means uh, uh, a companion. So we're kind of a companion on the road, like, cause it's a lot, it's a, it's a, it's kind of a lonely journey. And like, there's, there's whatever help that you can get. And we'd like to be that help. That's, that's the communication that we're going with. Yes, um, love it. And it ties in so well with like, I guess the IKEA effect or the endowment effect. If the drivers are part of the journey and if they're part of yeah. the part of the solution, they're more likely to buy into it. So I can see why, um, yeah, designing with the drivers is so much more powerful versus, um, yeah, maybe com coming across as um, designing from a glass building without understanding yeah. <laughs> the real pulse of the drivers. No, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think another thing is if you haven't already checked, there is this um, really interesting, um, like, so in the Indian truck art or the Pakistani truck art is been a very beautiful. Uh, so they use this, um, there's a ceramic paint, I'm forgetting the name, uh, but basically they use this particular paint to like really decorate their trucks. And uh, you have these beautiful peacocks, these colorful, vibrant, like, uh, like, you know, like uh, stories of like certain, like, you know, like, um, it's, it's, it's just something to like, it, I, I, I won't be able to do justice with my words, but like, even if you just like Google Indian truck art or Pakistani truck art, you see some beautiful designs. And what we thought is like, I mean, we've got these minimalistic designs which we had, but like, man, we can do so much more. So that's where we kind of used a lot of those elements, tried to digitize it. And uh, a lot of the design and a lot of the communication is going to be to kind of address that. So like, you know, like how do we kind of get those particular uh, like elements? And I think again, so, uh, there's a lot, I mean, so these elements, we're going to keep changing and improving and adding to the gallery, but there's peacocks and there's tigers and there's elephants and there's a lot of like India in these, uh, a lot of stories of India in these trucks. So I'm like, why are we, uh, you know, why are we like depriving of ourselves of this like beautiful opportunity to like, you know, to really express. So uh, a lot of the communication is in that space. So it is noisy. It is a lot of like, um, do you say a lot of uh, color? Uh, that's how we'd want to kind of talk to the drivers. So we'd want to welcome them with like things that they are used to seeing, you know, like they should see the application and they're like, this is for us. So that's another thing that we've taken a lot of um, care kind of trying to explaining. And uh, so that's how, the welcome so, scheme when they basically- I'm curious, how many how many languages did you, I, I saw a language page, how many languages have you- um, So at the stage, because it's still in the, what do you say? So we've, we've we're, we're way past our MVP now. We've got a lot of data from there, but like uh, we've right now, we'd like to kind of have uh, eight, we, we, our vision is to have eight languages. But at this stage, we want to get like, eight, like we want to get like three right, which is English, Hindi, and Marathi, because that's where we're currently functioning. And then as we grow, we we'll scale to eight languages. And obviously, India has so many, so eventually reaching sixteen is the goal. But eight is something which we can uh, still controllably do. Right. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to now switch to another screen, which is the drive mode screen. So what we said, okay, so this was a very important insight. Uh, what happened is uh, when, when I used to basically go down uh, and ask drivers, so okay, like, so there are a lot of safety solutions which are currently there, which are the ones that you use and what are your complaints? What are your, uh, what are the things you like about the solutions? And I, like, this is one quote, this one guy said, which never like leaves my head. He basically said, ki, Mere paas das saal ka which basically translates into, uh, I have like 15 years of experience and this black box is telling me how to live my life. You know, so they felt very condescended. They felt very uh, like, like, man, what the hell is this? Like, there's only negative reinforcement when we're driving. Like, what is this? Right? So um, we kind of wanted to address that. So what we did is we kind of came up with this communication system. It's, it's kind of designed looking at starting a few more telematic solutions. So I won't like, I, I'd be lying if I said that I, came up with this, just us, uh, but we took it from various places, but uh, green, amber, red are three colors that drivers see in their ecosystem. So what we said is uh, when the, when he's not making any mistakes, right? Like we say, Ustad, Ustad by the way, is a term of uh, respect. It's like, it's like um, when you're learning from a 
uh, like like i said the apprentice calls the driver ustad like you know i'm i'm, I'm like he's your master pre training you to kind of get somewhere so uh you're basically saying ustad badhiya driving like great driving you know when everything is fine um then probably he's trying to overtake so he has to over speed right so at that stage we basically go into uh, and yeah sorry like the more the, so this is an animation that basically plays but like so the more you drive the more you earn so we kind of telling him like you what you're doing keep doing what you're doing and if he makes a mistake like oh, for example he's driving for 4 hours he's not taking a break we say like usta chai break le lo so um this is again an animation which is going to keep coming so i don't know if you know but this is another uh, thing like when you when you see something hot something like which is piping hot and you kind of like it kind of makes you salivate it's kind of like a uh, so we kind of wanted to get a little bit of the um pavlovian effect here the kind of like like you know like just the um obviously we can't rely on uh, the sense of smell but at least visually we can basically show the drivers that man like take a break like you know that you've been driving for us straight you know so the chai break uh, again chai is very integral part of our country so uh, the chai it's break is something we do yeah, sorry it's Go working on. for me right now I, I, I'm, pri- i'm i'm primed i'm primed to stop and have a chai <laughs> i'd love to <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean obviously there's going to be an animation playing and we we've kind of take a lot of like uh, thought into like how do we do it because end of the day it's not about just communicating but how do we kind of prompt a certain action so that's it and like you know let's just so these are some of the other uh, explorations uh the second thing we wanted to also say in 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 this is to basically say that uh, so uh, by the way um um the way people make uh, the way truck drivers make money so they might be getting 15000 rupees from the transporter but they lie about how much the f- the the fuel efficiency of the truck is so to give you a quick example of how this works is uh, and and Vishal keep telling me if i'm going on time or not right uh, but um, basically what they do is they tell um, they tell the driver that they tell the transporter that the vehicle is giving a mileage of uh, Five kilometers per hour or something out of a per per uh, yeah, per kilometer, but uh, actually it'll be giving a mileage of say six kilometers, and that one rupee makes a really big difference. So in in a month they usually end up earning fifteen thousand from the drive, but they'll be earning like an extra ten twenty thousand just uh, cheating on the diesel, and this is a industry norm. So rather than saying you're over speeding, which he already knows he's doing, we basically say like you know like like hey man like uh, again the the text that you see here is sample text where um, going to kind of make it a little more nuanced a little more like wake up basically going to say like like you know that the diesel bajao like be a little careful with your diesel so we're using um communication which basically addresses their needs so and right. so, uh, so from yeah, to and, so from to understand that right the or, yeah. or, orange is for alerts for the driver to be a bit more mindful a bit more cautious and you're not really telling the driver that you're over speeding because they pro- they probably already know that they're over speeding but you're showing the incentive of actually staying to the speed limit means that you you can't save petrol or or diesel because you're going to burn you're going to burn less fuel if you stay within the speed limit is that is that absolutely right? yeah sorry i i kind of yeah so the high the high level sorry i cannot go into the detail but basically uh, green is when they're doing something right this positive reinforcement keep doing what you're doing orange is you've made a mistake like we're giving you an uh, this like a correction window like you got you got an opportunity to go back into green uh but if you don't and you kind of still uh, break that violation and you kind of uh, do not conform to like the safety you know as you go into like red and that's where your points are used and uh, end of the day like uh, like i said so 10 uh, 10 km 1 km is 1 point so basically in 10 points you can earn 1 rupee but now because you've been over speeding your um incentive is kind of eaten into you know so that's the communication in which we're trying to tell the driver and again these are these aren't final design these are explorations but uh, yeah another thing we realize is that they should be seeing uh, so for us safety is basically a seat belt but another thing that happens uh, so i don't know how to how to kind of unpack these uh, nuances but basically what happens is when a truck basically crashes the first thing he does is he flees the scene because there's usually a case that mobs uh, are usually come and beat them to death whether it's their fault or not because they assume he's basically drunk a drunk driving so uh, they don't believe in wearing seat belts because they can't jump off uh, or say the vehicle is going off the cliff they can't jump off so that that's a i mean and, and this is something like they say with a straight face i'm like why do you guys not wear seat belts like i can't jump off I like um i mean yeah so it was it was a good <laughs> learning curve there but uh, what, what what we realize again is that a lot of times when we talk about accidents they get angry they're like don't talk about the accident then we'll get in, like we'll actually get into one like, you know so for them safety is so uh, a nimbu i know this might seem different to like uh, a non indian audience but basically a nimbu with a mirchi on a string hanging 
that's a, that's basically to feign off bad luck. So for them, safety is not seat belts and ABS, but it's the Nimbu and Mirchi. So we've tried to like uh, incorporate those elements. Uh, so there's an animation of this particular thing dangling, saying like, alert, man, you're overspeeding. Like, can you like slow down a little? So we've tried to like, like I said, the word hum, like this is an application for truck drivers and how do we basically design for them? Yeah. Amazing. I, yeah, I love the simplicity in these um, explorations. And I know there are many, many layers of um, behavioral science, which is applied right through the app. I'd love to yeah, maybe open, the, open some space um, for any questions and reflections from the folks who have joined us um, today. Um, I can see a question just been posted by Adam, um, Adam, if you're happy, I know you have um, kids at home. Um, if you're if you're happy, um, feel free to unmute yourself and fire away your questions. And anyone else, feel free to write your questions or come on in and have a conversation. I can actually take this question up uh, right now, which Adam's asked, and it's a very relevant question, by the way. Uh, so that, so that again, um, I've kind of for every feature, we've kind of created a thing saying, what is the ideal behavior that the driver would have to do? So there are a couple of assumptions I'm making that the driver will basically put the application on a mobile holder. He'll put it on the dashboard, and it's going to be facing him. While he, so there are three steps that we're basically expecting the driver to do, and. Um, while that is happening, uh, we, we've again, so this is a hypothesis we kind of wanted to check, but when we realized that we're giving them monetary rewards, they were like, they were doing it, you know, like we, we really thought they won't. And there are a lot of other issues like uh, uh, consumption of battery, uh, phone overheating, and there's a lot of these other issues which are also there, by the way, and, you know, adapting with that. But uh, the thing with audios, and, and we have, by the way, the answer to your question is yes, in the, uh, in the animation, you must have seen a mute button option at the very right top corner so we do have uh, audio but our only concern is that if the if the volume of the phone i mean it could be on full volume but if the volume of the phone isn't loud enough because the engine's quite uh it's, these aren't like so bs6 and bs5 are the latest engines uh but most vehicles are bs3 and 4 and they're they're rocky they vibrate they're very uh, uh kind of loud so th there's a chance that they won't be able to hear it so we're kind of relying on audio alerts uh, sorry visual alerts Nice. And I can see questions from Srividya and uh, Aliona. Um, yeah, feel free to unmute yourself and share your question or reflection. Yeah, I think uh, there's another one which is basically about, uh, uh, is it the user base? So we basically have 80 lakh truck drivers. That's uh, how much is that, uh, Shal? That's 100 million? About 80 to, yes. uh, 80 to 100 million is basically the uh, the number of truck drivers. But again, uh, truck drivers are split into various categories. Uh, we, I won't get into that right now. That's a very demands thing. But if you're interested, I'll be more than happy. And, and there's some really interesting, I think, uh, in general, I think product management, behavioral, uh, there's a lot of like resources that I have access to, uh, which I've gotten from Reddit and a lot of other forms that be. And I think it's it's amazing that these uh, things exist. So I'm just gonna give Jehan, uh, sorry, I'm gonna give Vishal a list of uh, these particular things which you guys can uh, like basically make use of. And there's a lot of like research uh, for truck drivers in India. So there's an organization called Save Life Foundation. They've done a really good study of like, so they've actually talked about things like driver dissatisfaction score. So uh, the large chunk of the audience is actually really unhappy with the job. So to expect uh, productivity and would expect them to be happy about the job and I want to improve efficiency. It's a very unrealistic one. So that's another thing that we were basically working towards, but we realized that that, that messaging is not going to, that's one of the few discarded ideas that didn't make the cut. But, yeah. and, and the potential and the current, the current user base, it's, if I'm, um, if I remember right, is, is it about 150 drivers at the moment who you're getting insights and testing these hypotheses with? Yeah, so we basically, so we have about 10,000 uh, downloads on the Play Store, um, but out of that, the, uh, when, when uh, so I think uh, in the second wave of, of in India, ox the oxygen supply became a really big problem. And uh, I think it, it was a problem uh, across, but like, you know, given the scale and the number of people that we have, it became a real big issue. So our campaign actually went really live then, and we started, uh, so another thing is key, uh, uh, drivers who basically transport oxygen uh, have this thing called a has cargo license. So not anyone can drive. So there's out of 80, uh, 80 million, 
80 million uh, yeah, 80 million trucks um only 2500 drivers across india have the has license so if something happens to them um it's it's going to be chaos right so uh, so we we were basically our organization was specifically working with them so we tied up with a large uh, linde which is a big uh, gas supplier in india we tied up with them and we got like uh, 1200 drivers from them who were being incentivized and in using the application there yes i think i think yeah so 80 lakhs would translate to 8 million but um oh, 8 these, million sorry but these scales are so big we're talking about 8 million drivers <laughs> truck drivers on the road so <laughs> um yeah, these uh, it's really scale up when we talk about a country with such such such, such a big population. <laughs> Thank you. Was there yeah anything which um, with the messaging which you're seeing works from a be I'm curious from a behavioral side. Um, has any have have you been able to put out messages out there? Um, and observe behavior change as a result of the message, or is it um, still work in progress? So, so that question is uh, divided into two parts. There's the academic aspect, which is we have these beautiful ideas and frameworks in our heads. Are they going to work? And then there's those who've actually stood the test of time, right? Um, so, to basically answer your question, um, the the, ma the one thing that has worked, which is the high level strategy, which is masking safety. We say that you you drive the way we ask you to these safety parameters, you earn money. That has worked. Like, I mean, uh, this is probably my third uh, third B2C product. Like, you know, there's no salesperson, like you're, like there's you and there's the audience. Like, uh, and uh, in terms of the engagement, the retention, there's nothing genius here. We're giving money. So like, obviously they will be using it. Like, you know, that, that was another point that, and, and you're, what you're asking them so there are a lot of applications which have tried to use monetary incentives they haven't worked because there there is some job that the person has and you're asking him to do something out of that job but we're basically saying you're driving you're driving anyway just use the phone right so uh, there's a lot of things that we can also do from there so we've not talked about there's a lot of future potentials that we're basically addressing but uh the things that have worked is basically to say that if you're um like yeah like, i mean if you drive the way you drive and you get and the moment they got money uh, they could kind of write. And, and uh, another thing I'd like to kind of also note is that in the middle, when we were doing the drive campaign, I was the call center. So any problems that the drivers were facing, like there was me and two other people from my organization, but I would be the first point of contact. And if I don't answer, the others do. So that really helped me understand what is working. Is the communication given working? Because a lot of times the idea isn't bad, but the execution of the idea is very poor. So we, we, we dealt with a lot of these dealing problems. So the idea was kind of... Uh, um, undeveloped, I would say, and not mature enough. So we kind of matured it over time with uh, uh, certain things. So, so that really worked. And the others are, I mean, it has worked, but it's it's too small a scale to say it's worked. So I'm not going to say it's worked. Yeah. Yes. And, and primarily, I guess your hypothesis um, is drivers don't maybe incred care about their own safety or maybe safety is perceived as a as a luxury or something which is not top of mind, but they do care about incentives and um, these monetary incentives. And the behavioral framing comes in how you frame these incentives. So using the simple traffic lights, red, yellow, red, um, red or, or um, orange, green, reinforces that they are driving safe and they're earning more money as a result of driving face safe. So that connection is made, the implicit connection between safety um, and um, uh, and incentives um, takes place as a, as a result. So even though I don't consciously maybe care about my safety, I'm being reinforced by this um, safe behavior and I'm more likely to adopt it, I suppose, as a hypothesis. Um, Oh, for sure. I think, but I think like safety is a really uh, weird subject. I mean, uh, this is probably the third time I'm looking into safety because one of my other startups was we were. I think we dropped. I think we dropped our speaker at the uh, moment. Generally, with a. <laughs> okay, you're back. Generally, oh sorry. Can you can you hear me now? Yes. Oh sorry. Yeah, so I think uh, it, it's safety like insurance and any other things like, you know, like until something bad really happens, you don't see value in it. And especially in a developing world, right? Like where, uh, like, you know, like people are just like 
most most of the people are just working towards making ends meet uh how do you kind of plan for safety there like so i think the first battle is not even like a lot of times because another thing is a lot of companies have uh, like you know like the big oems and everyone they have applications for truck drivers the problem is uh um like the the problem actually happens to be where uh, they they like i mean it's kind of like business propaganda they have to justify that they um like they've catered to extra drivers they have shown safety but the the what the problem that we are actually addressing is not safety we're facing the first stage we're basically going for driver adoption and usability and i feel like um that's why a lot of people ask me about like safety and how many of these things have worked and we've we've got a lot of safety parameters which we've kept aside where right because the market isn't mature enough to kind of uh, face them so we've taken the most broad simple things and we're kind of at least road mapping it into saying that we start with this and we develop that further well um, and maybe a final question i can see um yeah. dimples question around what are some of the positive feedbacks which you're getting from the drivers already uh, okay yeah well uh, so i think uh, i so since i was a call center uh, there was i think four or five drivers uh, there was a larger number but now it's reduced over time there are four or five drivers i'm on a first name basis with and i i really incentivize them i give them uh like for any feedback if they say that something's not working i usually uh, give them 100 points so they have like whatever x number of rupees that they just get from us so i i heavily solidly incentivize them and I'm, i'm for us to have that feedback loop is very important so uh again i'm talking about so again uh, so whenever you come up with an idea there is people who really like it they're very receptive there's people who are neutral and there's people who don't care so i've kind of focused on the guys who do care right and that's a that, that's a small number by the way but um like uh, wait, so the the positive things that they basically got is that they were anyways i mean it's not like i'm asking them to do something um what do you say uh, i'm i'm not asking them to do something that was out of their scope that driving and they just asked to put that and just for them to get the money into their account that was one the second thing is where uh, the truck drivers still don't have a frontline p- uh, position in the country because a they're not the vote bank uh, so the politicians don't believe in investing in them second thing is they don't have a u- strong union uh, there's no representation for them and that's another problem we want to address you can how do we kind of unify them how do we create a voice for them and because of these two things there is no they've not been given the frontline position so since the government isn't uh, doing things for them we were like how do we give them uh, insurance so another initiative that we were doing is we were uh, giving insurance first for them and then eventually for their families so those things the fact that we're actually thinking not just safety but we're also thinking like you know like i said the vision of the organization is uh, like uh, reduce accident but also improve the lives of the truck drivers so the fact that we're focusing on improving their lives and their families lives they're super happy so that that's those are the two things i remember them being like really grateful for yeah. awesome um i can see a final final question from aliona yeah. um i i know that could be like quite a um big question i don't think we've spoken about it so far but um yeah what's the maybe like what how does the business model work in terms of incentivizing drivers and how how is it sustainable in the long term so that's a very good question and that's the most important one because sustainability is, is is one of the biggest things so we're a, we're a hybrid organization um initially it was jehan started this organization as a ngo and he wanted it to be a social cause uh and that is that is still there but what was happening is when we were raising funds for the organization um the people were only ready to give funds for uh benefiting the end beneficiary and not uh capacity building what what we were and this is not a legal thing this is just what people were doing so we were like uh we need to basically have a structure which works like a tech startup but does the good of the um uh, social on uh, like enterprise you know so how do we kind of take the best of both worlds and kind of combine them and a lot of people kind of uh, initially were kind of really uh, critical of it they said that this is a stupid idea and i know hybrid organizations in the west have been there but in india it's very rare uh, and, and there are a few but they're still very rare so uh, essentially we're a hybrid organization there's one aspect of the organization which i had is the tech startup arm of the organization where uh, we build the technology and there's a free license which is shared with the ngo uh, the end user which is the beneficiary will never be charged for using the service and uh, the monetization the so the revenue model is basically based on a uh, private space where we like you know like so so which is insurance and all these other agencies which will be interested in improving the lives of truck drivers so we've identified few players whose interest is in improving the lives of truck drivers and we other revenue comes from there nice awesome i think we yeah, have we've 
wrapped up with time and I know that's we could, that that's a big conversation by itself. Um, yeah, feel yeah. free to um, anyone who wants to find out more about the Ham Safer journey to connect with Sumed on uh, is the best way to connect with you on LinkedIn. Is there any other channels to find? LinkedIn, you? I can also drop in my email. I'd be more than happy to share this. Like I said, there's a lot of resources that I've gathered over a period of time and some really good TED Talks and videos. I'd be more than happy to share with uh, this community. And uh, yeah, it, it's it's great to kind of have uh, all of you all uh, interested in this. And thank you so much for this opportunity, Yashar, and to everyone here. Yeah, Sumay, thank you so much for making time to chat with us and we learn from our stories uh, and uh, learning from your story is such an incredible opportunity from, for us um, from different parts of the world to uh, connect and learn about what you do and I guess there's different things we're going to take away from this and um, it was yeah, real delight for them and ple pleasure to be able to host this space with you. <laughs> so it's awesome to have to have you here. And thank you everyone for making the session, for being part of the session and this conversation. Um, being able to share space for meaningful conversations is the reason why I totally love to do this. So thank you all for taking time off your day to chat with us. We'd love to hear any questions and reflections. Feel free to connect with Sumed or myself. Thank you all for joining us. Stay safe and keep well, everyone. Thank you so much. Take care.